dear. Uh, I'm sorry to have come round so early, Eleanor, dear. But I'm afraid what I have to tell you is rather embarrassing. Oh, now, Vera, you don't have to be embarrassed with me. I'm your friend. You know what they say about a trouble shared. Yes, but a trouble shared with you is so quickly shared by everyone else in a 50-mile radius. <laughs> now, that's not true, Vera. No, no, no. All right, then. A 20-mile radius. <laughs> anyway, there's something I must tell you before you read about it in the paper. In the paper? Good heavens. The news of the world hasn't found out what you really get up to at the Sycamores, has it, Vera? <laughs> They're not going to take the lid off the whole Eventide home orgy racket, are they? <laughs> now, you know my daughter, Trisha, the one, the one who's, who's married, married to, to a, a merchant, merchant ba banker, yes. And Trisha's daughter, Stephanie. The one who also married very well, yes. And uh, Trisha's other daughter, Isabel. The one who's always so polite to you and who's married to Rodney, the solicitor, yes. Well, she... She isn't married to him. You mean they're living in sin? Well, well, I don't know that I'd put it as strongly as... Well, yes. Oh, dear. How dreadful. <laughs> and are you also saying that Rodney isn't a solicitor? Oh, no, no, no. He is a solicitor. Oh, really? But... But what? He's been found to be embezzling his client's money. Oh, really? <laughs> There, I had to tell you, but Eleanor, you won't tell anyone else, will you? Oh, now, Vera, what do you take me for? <laughs> do you really imagine I'd do something like that? <laughs> but I mean, Sarah, dear, isn't it dreadful? It's going to go to court. Rodney's bound to be unfrocked. <laughs> I don't think that's what they do to solicitors, Mother. Well, debrief, then. <laughs> I don't actually think it's that either. What, whatever it is, that's what will happen to him. Oh, I do hope Claire's all right. What? Well, I do worry about the crowd she goes round with. Uh, that Dwayne who hasn't got a job and has the tattoo. And now I've heard this business about Rod. I think there are any worries about the same thing happening with Dwayne, Mother. I don't think there's that much to embezzle down at the job centre. Uh, no, I suppose not. Claire never tells you who she's really going out with, does she? No! You always told me everything. No, Mother, I always told you something. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you saying you used to tell me lies? No, I just used to be a bit selective about how much truth I told you. What? Well, remember I once told you I was going out to see Pinocchio? Yes, I remember the occasion well. Very suitable, I thought that was. What I didn't tell you, though, was which boy was nicknamed Pinocchio. <laughs> Sir. Or why? <laughs> Sarah, I'm shocked and appalled. How would you react if Claire told you such deceitful things? Oh, no danger of that happening. Why? Well, Claire never tells me anything. Goodness, the day Claire ever tells me the name of one of her boyfriends, I'll know it's the real thing. Hello, Mummy, Granny. Hello, Hello Claire. Glad I caught you in. Yes, Russell's got a new policy of opening later on Saturday. What are you doing tomorrow? Oh, uh, not a lot. Usual stuff, you know, washing, cook the odd meal, try to climb the north face of the Sunday Times. Why? Would it be all right if I invited somebody to tea, then? <laughs> you don't have to ask my permission to invite someone to tea in your own flat. No, I, I mean tea here, with you. With me? Sunday tea? Here, with me? And Granny, yeah, will you be free then, Granny? Certainly, dear. Can I ask who... His name's... <sighs> David. Oh. Is it... <laughs> I'll get through the catalogue and everywhere it says VG condition, I'll just cross out the V. Sarah, am I being fanciful to detect signs of nervousness in your behaviour? What? Nervousness? Me? Why? That is the third pile of books. Fourth pile of books that you dropped today. You have also included a ten-pound note in one customer's change from a fiver and directed a lady looking for a prayer book to the Victorian erotica section. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Russell, a bit tired. Nonsense. It's nerves. You're worried about this tea party tomorrow. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Honest. Anyone would think it was you presenting your boyfriend. Claire's the one who has a right to feel nervous. Is she twitching about all over the place? No, she isn't. 
That's what's so unnerving. She's very calm, just floats around with a distant, gooey expression, like something out of a shampoo advert. Nothing wrong with her being in love, is there? Who suppose not? Oh, come on, Sarah. You can't complain about her being secretive this time. She's being the model daughter. I know, it's spooky. Inviting the boyfriend home for Sunday tea. <laughs> it's like something out of Jane Austen. Yes, it feels most peculiar. I'm so used to Claire keeping her boyfriends a closely guarded secret. Now she's actually got one she wants to introduce. The pressure on me to like him is almost unbearable. I'm sure you'll manage. Now what if I don't like him? You will do what mothers have done at Sunday teas for centuries and gracefully hide the fact. Well, that's another thing that worries me. What? Well, we never eat Sunday tea. We have a large lunch and then a snack in the evening. Sunday tea is just not a meal that happens in our house. So you're worried about the catering, is that it? Well, I think traditionally you make a pot of tea, bake the odd cake, cut a few sandwiches. Cucumber are very popular. Shut up, Russell. Tea itself is not the problem. Anyway, Mother's gone into overdrive on that. Tea is her meal. Oh, no, I'm sure it'll be all right. Nothing can possibly go wrong so long as Mother provides enough rock cakes and brandy snaps and coconut kisses. Butterfingers! I don't think she's making any of those. <laughs> Can I offer you any more of anything, David? Well, thank you, Sarah, yes. And if I might just have one more of those excellent coconut kisses. Of course. <laughs> and you say you made these, Mrs. Prescott? Do call me Eleanor. Oh, thank you. Eleanor. I did make them, yes. They really are excellent. Quite excellent. <laughs> Aren't you going to have another, darling? Uh, no, thanks, David. I I'm not that hungry. <gasps> oh, I think I can guess what's made a certain young lady lose her appetite. <laughs> yes, Mother, the fact that she only finished lunch two hours ago. <laughs> so you actually run the dental practice from your home, David, do you? Yes, sir. The ground floors, all surgeries, waiting rooms and what have you. I have the flat above. It's quite adequate for a bachelor, you know. Yes. Of course, I might have to think of having the practice separate, if my circumstances changed. Yes, well, there wouldn't be room for a family in one of uh -huh. those. <laughs> <laughs> that really was delicious, Eleanor. Thank you. A feast fit for a king. Oh, it was nothing, really. <laughs> Just a humble little family tea, like I knock up every Sunday. <laughs> Actually, since the weather's so nice, Claire and I thought we'd take a little walk by the river. Perhaps you'd care to join us. Oh, that's very kind of you. It might be rather pleasant to stretch my legs for... Mother, I think you'd like to stick to your original plans for the afternoon, wouldn't you? Original plans, dear? Yes, you know, just to put your feet up for a... But I don't want to put my feet up. While, while Claire and David go for a walk by themselves. But I... Uh... <laughs> oh. oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Yes, I think, actually, David, if you don't mind, I had rather promised myself I'd put my feet up. <laughs> Have to look after yourself when you get to my age. Oh, Eleanor, you're no age at all. David. <laughs> Still, if we can't persuade you. Sarah, would you care to join us? Oh, no, you two. Just go on. <laughs> well, thank you. Are you set, darling? Uh, yes. Sarah, this has been quite delightful. I knew, having met Claire, that I couldn't fail to like her mother, and I must say, I wasn't disappointed. Oh, well, thank you. And as for her grandmother, well, <laughs> what can I say? Oh, David. <laughs> well, Claire, shall we get going, then? Yes, fine, I'll uh, just get my jumper. Uh, no, no, let me open the door for you. <laughs> Again, many thanks to both of you. So glad we've met, and look forward to seeing lots more of you. Yes, that'd be... So um... do we, David, so do we. Cheerio, then. <laughs> well, well, Claire certainly seems to have landed on her feet there. Yes. A dentist. I mean, Sarah, a dentist. Mm. Well, they make pots of money. <laughs> you never hear of dentists being caught embezzling. <laughs> no, it's absolutely perfect. Mm. I must have a word with Vera. I think being married to a dentist is just a bit of an improvement on living in sin with a bent solicitor, don't you? <laughs> Mother, you are jumping the gun. No, I'm not. You've only got to look at them together. They were clearly meant for each other. But doesn't it worry you that Claire's so quiet when David's around? Not at all. I think for the woman to be quiet is a very good basis for marriage. Oh, I think my father might have been quite amused to hear you say that. 
I beg your pardon, nothing, dear? Nothing, mother, nothing. But tell me, what was your impression of David? Well, to be quite frank... Oh, I see. You're going to find fault again, are you? No, it's not just finding fault. It's... it's... Look, you, you promise you won't tell Claire anything I say about David? Of course I won't. I don't want to spoil a, a perfect relationship, even if you do. And that's not what I want. Claire I just... needs someone mature and responsible. And David's so... so... oh, what's the word? Boring? <laughs> Sarah, that's neither here nor there. Goodness, if you ruled out potential husbands just on the grounds that they were boring, nobody would ever get married. <laughs> anyway, Claire loves him. And love is blind. Or maybe, but it's not deaf. <laughs> and it didn't need to be to survive listening to David for any length of time. Sarah, you're only really acting like this because you're jealous. Jealous? You've lost Henry, and as a result, you don't want Claire to have David. <laughs> Mother, it's really not that. You may not realise it, but a psychologist would tell you that what you really want is a David of your own. And any other psychologist would tell your psychologist that he was round the twist. <laughs> you mean you don't want David? No, Mother, I don't. Well, to be fair, yes, I can envisage circumstances in which I might want David. Where? When I had really bad toothache and the world had run out of anaesthetic. <laughs> what do you mean? David's the only dentist I know who could talk me into insensibility. <laughs> worried me, Russell, was the thought that what Mother said might be true. Oh, come on. You're not really jealous of Claire having David? No, of course not. <laughs> jealous of Claire having someone, though, perhaps. Nonsense. And the affair continues, does it? Claire's still as in love as ever. Oh, yes. I suppose I can understand it to an extent. She's lacked that kind of solidity and security since Henry died. David's older, settled, polite, considerate, charming, conventional. <laughs> And about as interesting as a draft resolution from the European Parliament. Yup. <laughs> Still, if that makes Claire happy. Oh, yes, yes, I know. I must keep quiet. I mustn't say anything. No, this is one of those occasions when the mother's lips must remain firmly stapled together while the daughter gets on with her own life. And after all, there are worse things than spending your life with a draft resolution from the European Parliament. It must be, mustn't there? Hard to think of many offhand, but there must be. No, if it's what Claire wants to do, then I must just... Yes, thank you, Russell. <laughs> now, what, what really upsets me, I think, is, is the effect David has on Claire. I thought you said she was behaving frightfully well to you. Well, yes, I can't complain. Suddenly I have the ideal daughter. But when she's with David, she's so... she's so mouse-like. Power of love for you? But it's not Claire. And, and I know she can't keep it up forever. Sooner or later she's going to relax and assert herself and show David the real Claire. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that the real Claire was so terrible. Oh, no, it isn't. It's lovely and capricious and infuriating and stubborn and rude and slams a lot of doors. <laughs> I'd just feel happy if I thought David had seen that Claire before he takes any long-term decisions about the one he has met. Do you think that long-term decisions are... Who can that be at this time? They're shut. Fight on book. <laughs> Russell, is Sarah there? Ah, yes, yes, she is. Evening, Mother! <laughs> Sarah, why aren't you home? You're usually home by this time. Mother, if I want to stay late and have a drink with Russell, I'd have thought that was my business. Well, I've been expecting you. I told David you'd be back any minute, and that was half an hour ago. David? Is he there? Yes. But it's a Tuesday. He knows that Claire plays badminton on Tuesday nights. It's not Claire he wants to see. It's you, Sarah. Oh. He's wearing a suit. <laughs> Ah, that bad. I'd better come back. What's he doing now? Well, I've sat him down with a cup of tea and a plate of coconut kisses. <laughs> I'm out filling the teapot. Clever ruse, Mother. <laughs> well, surely he can cope on his own for five minutes. Oh, he isn't on his own. No? No. Vera Poling's talking to him. Oh, David and Vera. Well, I hope Oscar Wilde's in there taking notes. <laughs> Bye. Do you actually have your own teeth, Mrs. Poling? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Your teeth. 
Are they your own? Oh, yes. I mean, they're false, but they're my own. <laughs> ah, yes, well, it's very probable that if you'd flossed all your life, you'd still have your own natural teeth. What was that word you used? Flossed? Yes. Well, well, well. No, most tooth decay is completely preventable. Fancy that. If everyone spent just a quarter of an hour a day caring for their teeth, do you know what would happen? Well, I suppose you'd be out of a job, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, there you are at last. He's still here. Fine. Sarah's here now, David. Oh, good. Now, Sarah, you're not to say anything that'll ruin things. Mother, I won't say a word. Come along, Vera. We must leave David and Sarah on their own. I'm sure they've got a lot to talk about. Oh, well. Hello, David. Good evening, Sarah. Come along now, Vera. I'm just coming. Thank you so much, David, for telling me all that about dental floss. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, goodbye, Vera. Goodbye. Goodbye, Eleanor. Goodbye. <laughs> Sorry I wasn't here, David. Oh, no problem. Your mother and Vera entertained me very well. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Oh, do sit down, please. <laughs> Pulled a few today, have you? I beg your pardon? <laughs> teeth, teeth. Oh, no. No extractions today. Plenty of fillings. Ah. Ah. The fact is, Sarah, I've come to see you on rather an important matter. Oh, yes? As you may be aware, Claire and I have been seeing rather a lot of each other recently. Yes, well, I, I did, um, had just sort of noticed. And the fact is that I am extremely serious. Yes, I noticed that too. <laughs> First time I met you. About her, Claire, your daughter. Yes, I know the one. <laughs> the fact is, Sarah, that I'm now 28 and well established in my chosen profession. Yes. And I think it's a very suitable time for me to get married. Suitable? 28, yes. Well, that sounds very, um, very suitable, yes. I own my own house. Well, that is to say, I'm three years into the repayment of a £65,000 endowment mortgage. Yes, look, I, I'm really not interested in the details, just so My that... accountant could show that my turnover last year was in excess Yes, of yes, look, um, you don't have to convince me anymore. You are obviously quite the most eligible bachelor ever created. Well, oh, my parents, incidentally, both in their 70s and extremely fit. There is no history in our family of heart disease or insanity, <laughs> nor has there been any criminal David, record. It's or... fine, it's fine, you can relax. Thank you very much, Sarah. But I don't think I will quite relax until I have asked you formally for your consent to my marrying your daughter. Claire. <laughs> Yes, um, as I said before, I, I do know the one you mean. <laughs> well, may I ask for your verdict? Uh, David, um, as Claire's mother, my, my only concern is for her happiness. You want to marry Claire, and if Claire wants to marry you, um, well, it sounds as if marriage is the obvious solution. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, so, uh, welcome to the family, David. Thank you. Tell me, when do you actually propose to her? When? Yes. Oh, I haven't mentioned marriage to Claire yet. <laughs> no? No, no, I wanted to get it all sorted out with you first. Oh. Well, thank you. Very proper. I wonder if we ought to go up now. Oh, no. I'm sure Sarah will come down and tell us as soon as there's anything to tell. Charming David, isn't he? Oh, yes, he is. And a dentist. Yes, he certainly left me in no doubt about that. <laughs> and what's more, Vera, he's as honest as the day is long. Is he? I propose of nothing, have you heard any more of Rodney? Well, he's, he's been suspended from the firm. Oh, that is good news, isn't it? Why? <laughs> well, it means he won't be tempted to do any more embezzling, will he? <laughs> Snug up! Well then, I suppose congratulations are in order. I suppose so. You don't sound ecstatic. No, no, I'm sorry. I will get better at sounding ecstatic with, 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 with practice. I mean, it's not everyone who gets to be the mother-in-law of a draft resolution from the European Parliament. Shut up, Russell. 
Is Claire thrilled to the back teeth? Russell. <laughs> I haven't seen her yet. David went up to her flat as soon as she got back from badminton. No doubt they're celebrating in their own way. Raising the odd glass of pink mouthwash, what? Russell, no more dentist jokes, please. I've got to come round to the idea of David. In spite of first impressions. <laughs> Russell, I said no more dentist jokes. I'm sorry, he said, lying through his teeth. But I was wondering, what on earth was that? Is your house falling down? Don't know. Sounds like the door from Claire's flat. Oh, I must go. I'll see you in the morning, Russell. Claire. Oh, Mummy, it's over. <laughs> David and me, it's over. No. I know he came to see you. Yes. I'm not going to marry him. Why? Because of you. Because of me? But I, I didn't say anything to him, I promise. No, but because of your marriage. I mean, you married too early. You, you hadn't sorted out who you were before you married Daddy. That's why his death hit you so hard. And I'm not going to marry till I know who I am. And, well, if that means losing David... Well, surely you don't have to break up completely. Yes, we do. <laughs> when he asked me to marry him, I, I said no. I, I said I didn't feel ready for marriage yet, but well, I suggested that we should live together for a year or two, see how we got on. Mm. David was deeply shocked at the idea. <laughs> and I just suddenly realised what a deeply stuffy, deeply conventional person he really was. And also how little I really meant to him. I mean, me as a person, me, Claire, not, not me as an ideal, potential little wife. Oh, David's life plan involved marrying at 28 and he'd got it all set up, the house, the business, the money. He just left the one gap in the middle of the jigsaw for the wife. And I don't fit that gap. Oh, Claire, love. <laughs> <laughs> give, give David a couple of months and I'm sure he will find someone else, someone who does fit his jigsaw. I'm sorry. I thought he was what you wanted. Oh, well, that's what I thought. And everybody was so encouraging. Granny thought he was wonderful. You seem to think the same. Did I? Yes. Oh, thank goodness I saw through him and now realise just how stuffy and boring he really is. Yes. I mean, Mummy, couldn't you see how boring he was? Well, yes, perhaps. Oh, Hannah, but... didn't you say something? Well, I... Well, I do hope I haven't chosen the wrong moment. Why? You have on every other occasion in your life. <laughs> uh, we saw that David's car had gone and we just wondered if there was any news. News, yes, yes. The news is that I'm in no state to be interrogated by you. But what's happened, Sean? Oh, Granny, me... can't you just for once mind your own bloody business? Oh, Mother, look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Eleanor, dear, my granddaughter Isabel may be living in sin with an embezzler. What? You? But at least she'd never dare to talk to her grandmother like that. 